One of the topics that we always touch on on real health is gut health, as we know that it affects our mental, emotional and physical health as well. Seeing that this is the first episode of this season, we thought it would be a good idea to start with just giving you some tips and advice to help keep things in balance. And for this discussion, I'm joined in studio by Christine Baxter, who is a nutritional advisor and health coach. Welcome, Christine. Good to have a new face for a change. Oh, thank you for having me. So, Christine, let's talk gut health. As I say, it's something that we do perennially chat about, but it's so, so, so important. And I think the important thing for people to understand is what is the actual principle behind gut health, the importance in living a healthy life with good gut health? Okay, so the one thing that honestly sticks in my head from all my studying and nutrition, and that is, it's not necessarily the food you eat, but it's actually what you digest and absorb. Right. Okay, so our gut health becomes really important, and it's actually referred to as the second brain, because it's involved in so many processes in the body. Mm. All right, so, you know, it's it important in terms of nutrient absorption, all right, as well as hormone utilization, okay, and allowing us to get f um, energy from our food and um, everything from programming our immune system as well. That's something that not a lot of people know about the gut, and that's why the quality of your gut health actually affects um, your appearance and overall health. Um, so your gut health also has a lot to do with um, mood disorders, all right? Because if you're sitting with a bacterial imbalance in your gut, um, you're gonna sit with that same imbalance in the brain, all right? Something called um, gut dysbiosis. And uh, because the brain and the gut are actually connected via the vagus nerve, it is that, that highway, as to say, in terms of the bacteria that, say, if it's not in a good place in your gut, is not, it's really going to affect your, your anxiety, moods, and stuff like that as right. well. It's probably quite a broad question, but in terms of signs or symptoms that you have um, a problem with your gut health, what would be the most obvious ones or the first ones that show up? So some of the big symptoms that you can experience is obviously the most common, which are your digestive issues, yes. all right, um, constipation, diarrhea, abdominal cramping, and believe it or not, f um, reflux and bloating, okay. okay, having eaten something and then you have this, this bloat afterwards, feeling uncomfortable in your skin. These are all symptoms that the body's telling you mm, things aren't 100% right. So then not, so those are the most common ones that we know of, all right, but your gut health also can influence hormonal imbalance, all right? And this one's a big one. So not just your sex hormones, but also your metabolic hormones, okay? It can lead to um, sluggishness, tiredness, that kind of thing. And in saying that, it affects your metabolism as yes. well, all right? Which sometimes when women struggle to lose weight or even struggle with obesity, it can stem from what is actually happening with their gut, mm -hmm. okay? Another one is skin rashes, allergies, even eczema, okay? What is happening with the gut, right. okay? And one of the last ones um, is autoimmunity, all right? Sitting with chronic inflammation when the gut is severely inflamed, autoimmune diseases stem from what is once again also happening with your gut. And yeah. this is everything from um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is obviously with the thyroid, um, inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's, and even um, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. So it really is so vital to concentrate what is happening with the gut. Yeah. Things that will impact gut health. I mean, what are, what are the ones that we're facing or that you're seeing in, in patients um, most frequently from lifestyle to nutrition to whatever else may be having an impact? Okay, so obviously the first one, which is the biggest one, is diet. Okay, um, people underestimate the power of food and mm. what you're putting in your mouth. Okay, so in saying that, a diet that is high in sugar, low in fiber, um, a nutritionally depleted food, all right, um, a lot of processed foods, your trans fats, your, your basically your bad fats, mm -hmm. okay, um, these all are um, damaging the body, damaging the cells. Because remember, if I can put it this way, if you don't recognize an, a name on a label, what makes you think your body's going to recognize it? Yeah, absolutely. It? That's a good point. Okay. So, you know, the idea of going back to, um, back to the basics, going back to nature, how did we used to eat, okay? Mm. Going for things that are whole foods. This is really important. So diet is obviously the first one. Um, a second one, believe it or not, is a frequent use of antibiotics. Right. Okay. So obviously antibiotics have their place, 
but frequent use of them can really damage that um, micro, the microflora, but your, your microvilli, which is um, responsible for absorption in the gut, okay? And the problem with that is it can really start to affect the integrity of the gut lining, and over time, you actually stop absorbing the nutrients that you need to, all right? So apart from diet antibiotics, there's obviously anti-inflammatories and acids. Using a frequent amount of them really obviously causes, causes um, further issues, mm. okay? Um, chronic stress. Chronic stress is a big one because when you don't deal with it, it, it really impacts the gut because how, uh, getting back to that brain gut link, when you feel stressed and anxious, where do you feel it most? Absolutely. Okay, you feel it in your gut. Yes, yeah, yeah. but it's because it's got that direct link, okay? And if your body's in that heightened level of um, stress continuously, it also heightens your levels of cortisol and adrenaline, okay? Which causes the digestive system to actually shut down. Okay. All right. Other things, parasites, um, bacterial infections, yeast such as candida, um, and also having um, low stomach acid, okay? Um, one thing that people don't know, and that is you shouldn't actually be drinking water or dr liquid with your food. You should actually have about a 20 minute break in between because when you drink uh, fluid, it actually dilutes your stomach acid right. mm. and it affects the absorption of nutrients during digestion okay. as well. In a way, it sounds a bit scary because there's so many things that can have an yes. impact. On <laughs> How do you encourage people to, to sort of take those first steps um, to, to re-kickstart this whole biome that is, is so essential? So whole food eating, eating properly is obviously number one, one way to go, okay? I always recommend staying um, as close as possible to your, your whole foods, your fruits and vegetables, eating as much as leafy greens as possible, staying to your organic um, lean proteins, your nuts, your seeds, your pulses, okay? A very good tip is when it comes to grocery shopping is stick to the outside. Yes. All right, stick, favorite comment. Yeah, that. stick to the <laughs> outsides. Everything that's processed, packaged, bottled, etc., is generally in the middle of the supermarkets. Um, and that that is an easy tip to, you know, start making those changes. Right. And you need to take it step by step, all right? Because also remember, you've been eating in a certain way for so many years. And this is obviously also in terms of where the health coaching comes in. And that is changing that mindset, changing that behavior, um, because diet change can be difficult, yes. all right? Because it's those mindset patterns. But now needing to make those changes and taking it step by step to actually change it in your mind, taking the time to change that behavior right. is what actually allows for long-term success. Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, on top of those changes that you might be making, things like pre and probiotics, it's always part of this discussion. Yes. Is it enough? In terms of, as uh, we said, the whole foods eating properly, there's more to it, obviously. And with the prebiotics and the probiotics, supplementing is necessary when you struggle with nutrient absorption, all right, getting that gut right. So with probiotics specifically, okay, investing in a high quality probiotic is a good idea, all right, but you can also do it naturally with obviously your natural foods such as kombucha, yes. kimiche, um, yogurt, sauerkraut, okay. Those have natural good probiotics in it and they do recommend including those in the diet. But you do have to just be careful because of the fact that if your gut is sitting in a bit of an imbalance, you might actually react to those foods more so, okay? So if you're sitting with a bit of gut dysbiosis, you actually might land up with more bloating, all right? So that's why I generally recommend try the probiotics first, see if that works, and then when the gut starts to heal, add in more of those natural okay, ones, fantastic. all right? Then the story with the prebiotics is, so if you remember in terms of the gut, it is a balance between the bacteria and the microorganisms that are there, all right? Now, they're living organisms, so they need food, okay? So that is where this comes into play. Right. That's where prebiotics come into play. Those bacteria need the food. So you, the prebiotic is the food for the probiotic, okay? okay. But prebiotics you can get naturally in your diet, which is your high fiber foods, okay? Your soluble, your insoluble, which is your fruits and vegetables, etc. And that's what actually naturally uh, feeds then those, those uh, good bacteria. Right. Because keeping in mind, bad bacteria actually thrives on sugar. 
Yes, and that's when you really can throw yourself way out of whack. Yes. Yeah. Because the gut is is cells and it's designed to heal, mm -hmm. okay, when you start healing the gut, taking those steps forward, okay, in terms of eating properly, cutting out, a actually one thing I didn't mention was cutting out anti-inflammatory foods, okay, that's a big one because as much as you're feeding the gut, you want to also take out what could be causing the issues, okay? So it is something I look at in my practice a lot is actually your food intolerance as okay, well okay. because that can also um, damage that that gut um, permeability, yes. all right? And then you can sit with leaky guts, etc. cetera. And um, with regards to that, then you, you basically, you want to take out those inflammatory foods, okay? So um, g gluten's a big one, dairy can be a big one as well. Most of the time I say to my clients, take it on a trial basis, cut out gluten and dairy for two to four weeks, mm -hmm. see how you feel, all right? Generally, those small changes can make a big difference. Right. They normally report feeling a lot lighter in their gut at having it work much better and also an increase in energy, okay. all right? And um, so that was another thing is looking at then those anti-inflammatory foods. Right. So what else, like you were saying, what can you do in, in the real life, okay? So 80%, 20%, the body's designed to heal. So when you're doing 80% of it correct, all right, having a small treat, as long as it's not consistently yes, like a yes. bar of chocolate every day <laughs> okay you're not going to take gigantic steps back remember as much as in a natural journey it is the consistency all right so consistently eating properly okay same with your supplementations consistently taking them yes, yes. it's the same as poor gut health eating sugar consistently where the issue comes in okay great to have you in the studio wonderful wonderful discussion uh, i look forward to having you back Thank you. Great.